Hey there, it's Diane Price. I am so excited. I am talking to Carson today. Matern? Matern. 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 And I met him at my Rotary Club, and his story is so amazing. I wanted to share it. Tell us why you're here. So I'm here because I'm a rider with Team Canada for track cycling. Over the last couple of months, I've been traveling the world with my bike to compete uh, on the road and on the track. And uh, this, this summer, this August, I'm going to be traveling to Israel for the Junior World Championships, where once again, I hope to win another world title. Uh, and another. Course, another world Let's title. Let's stop there for a second. Okay. So you won the world title last year? Correct. Last, last summer, we went to uh, Cairo in Egypt for the world championships, where I became a world champion at the scratch race event. Okay. which is a 10 kilometer just all out race against all the other countries. Now getting to go back and defend that title and hopefully come home with another gold medal, another rainbow jersey as we call it in cycling, the signature signature uh, top of, of the world champion. So tell me about that, that signifies the different continents did you say? Yeah, so when you're a world champion in the sport of cycling you get to wear a jersey and it's all white and it has stripes across the chest and it's one, each stripe signifies a, a different continent. So it's like the world champion jersey. You have conquered, you know, all the continents essentially when you get to wear this jersey. So I've gotten to ride around the last year in one of these, and I, I hope to have another year in, a, in that. Do you place. get to keep it? Yes, you but get to you, keep you're it. You're not supposed to wear it after someone else takes right. the title. Correct. Okay. You get a nice one on the podium that has like a nice collar and everything, and that one's framed, and then I have the proper racing suit. Okay, yeah. awesome. So curious, what drives someone like you? I mean, I consider myself a pretty driven person. Mm -hmm. um, reading a good book right now about drive. It's okay. actually called Drive. Oh, nice. And there's uh, intri intrinsic and extrinsic. Okay. Um, what drives you? For me, it's just really loving what I do. Like I think there's lots of people in anything that are doing a sport or a job because they want success, whatever they define success to be. But for myself and my own endeavors, it's I've, whenever I do something, it's because I'm genuinely pretty passionate about it. Mm -hmm. Like school, not just doing school to get an A. I, I genuinely enjoy learning and I study things that I'm interested in. I take courses that I want to learn more about and I find that fulfilling. And the same goes for cycling. Like I'm not just here because I'm good at it. I'm not just here because I want to win. I really enjoy the process and kind of the sensations of cycling, getting to go explore and ride my bike. And it's it's really fast and it's really dangerous at times. And it's that thrill and just the passion for it. And I'm, I feel really fortunate that I'm in the position I'm in, mm -hmm. that it's worked out, that I'm, I'm finding success in cycling. But I think even, even if I was just doing this for fun, I'd still be riding my bike just because I love it so much. And that's what's allowed me to take it to the next level and next level every year, year after right. year, just because I, I love it and I just want to keep doing it. So when you were a little boy, you played hockey, baseball, soccer, played yeah. piano, yeah. you tried it all, basketball, yeah. you're tall. Yeah. Well, you weren't this tall last year when I saw no, you. You no, grew a lot of last year. Um, and at some point you got on your bike on the street yeah. and your parents pushed you and yeah. you flew and, and that was it? Like, yeah, do you remember when you fell in love with it? It was kind of a funny way that I got into cycling. Like, a bike has always sort of been a part of my life. I was two years old at the Heritage Days in Ancaster. We walked by Ancaster Cycle and I... They you all know, convinced my parents to, to buy me a bike when I was like two. And that's kind of where it started. And I was just always riding. If I was going somewhere, I was going on my bike. I wouldn't drive if I could right. avoid it. Right. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, I tried all these other sports and nothing really stuck. I really enjoyed more individual based sports. So and things with a little bit more of a technical element. I really enjoyed skiing. I really enjoyed playing golf. I really liked Girl, okay, swimming. Okay. Like this with sports that combined like athleticism and then also like a highly technical side, and right. especially the more individual ones. And then it was sort of just a natural evolution into cycling. I already loved riding my bike. I started doing it more and more often. And then someone told me, hey, you should race. So I do want to just ask you, what's your ultimate goal? So my ultimate goal right now is to make it to the Olympics. That's been a dream for as long as I can remember. It's I'm already sort of living a bit of that dream, getting to represent my country and wear that Maple Leaf uniform all over the world. But I feel like getting to the Olympics is sort of the ultimate honor in, I would agree, in, yeah. in this sport. So that's my goal. I mean, 2024 in Paris is, is coming up quick. Olympic selection is going to happen, you know, soon. It's going to come up pretty quick, too. In order to get to the Olympics, you have a plan for next year? Yes. Doing some competitions as well? Yeah, so the run-up to the Olympics gets really, uh, really busy and really complicated because, of course, we have to hit enough races that we can qualify for the Olympics. It's not a given that you get to go every country. Right. So we have to race a certain number of World Cups and score a certain amount of points in all the events just to even get a spot. And then you, as a, as a rider from Canada, you then have to qualify for the Olympic team. There's 10 riders on the elite national team, and I'm one of those 10 riders. Five of us get to go to the Olympics. So five get cut. Mm. And uh, right, right now, you know, I, I, like, I feel confident that I'm going to be able to make the team, but we have to hit all these benchmarks first. And I think 
So, and what about in your private life? You're going to go to school? Yeah, so I'm starting university in the fall. I'm going to McMaster in the Arts and Science program, and I'm really excited about that. There's lots of great people that I've already met in the program that are going to be starting the same year as me. And kind of in my head, I have this, this dream of one day getting to study medicine. Uh, so that's what I'd like to do uh, after kind of my undergrad. Just a little bit of bragging rights, you did pretty well in high school? Yeah, yeah. I was, I, I was a pretty good student. I was really disciplined about it, and it was difficult when my friends just wanted to hang out or go have fun, and I had to stay and study and follow the plan. And I think it just suited me well. I like making goals, making plans, and following it, and that's effectively what I had to do when you have training, which is kind of like a full-time job on top of school. Right. And it's just, it was just my life for a few years. It so, shows it can be done. Yeah, it's it's not hard. It just takes a bit of discipline. And... So trying to raise, for this trip, $6,000. Correct. But anybody who wants to follow you on social media can see when you're racing in the future because this is not a one and done. This no. is, we're working towards the Olympics mm -hmm. and all of these races that you're going to have costs that the government doesn't cover. Correct. They they help, but right. you, it runs short. And exactly. so you need to raise money and you're out there digging to get it and not right. just counting on it falling in your lap. Yes, well, even just this year, Israel isn't the end of the line. The season still keeps going. There'll be races into the fall that I'll have to go and compete at and want to go compete at. It's not right. like a necessity. Right. Um, so yeah, Israel is kind of the big goal, but then we come back from Israel, I'll probably have a, a few days off and then we'll be competing again in, in a week or so. If nothing else, knowing I have the community behind me is so motivational when we're on the other side of the planet and just you know, here to do our thing and knowing I've got everyone back home. It's, it's yeah. such a good feeling. It was amazing well, last year. So tell us where they can find your GoFundMe page. Yeah, so my GoFundMe is on both my social medias. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. If you just Google me, Carson Matern, it comes up. Uh, there's links in my bio, the latest posts. Um, I'm sure you'd be able to, to put a link below this post. Uh, but it's out there. If you just Google me, I'm sure it'll come up. Awesome. I'm going to just say keep your eyes on this guy because, uh, like, this is exciting. I get to know you. I get to yeah. know you when, and, and uh, we're going to be supporting you. It's so, brilliant. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, our pleasure.